Hey, my name is Michael LaHood for Axolytics, and we are going to now talk about inventory planning. It's critical to note that the forecast disaggregation and the forecast consumption pieces must be completed in order to do your inventory plan. And also, if you have any inventory policies, they need to be set up ahead of time. So let's jump right into inventory planning. So as Matt discussed, the policies can be applied based on your ABC XYZ criteria. And if you'll notice at an inventory planning level, we are planning at a DC slash product level. So we are looking at the California DC product two for scenario one, and it defaults to a 97% service level demand variability. Um, as Matt showed, we can also override this if we want. Now, you'll notice that there are numerous parameters that we can change and modify here in our inventory planning at a DC product level in order to plan each product best at that uh, distribution center. So one of the things we can do is if you notice the inventory is kind of all over the place, if we did have a frozen period horizon that we were not able to order in, so let's say we set this to 12 periods, which would be two and a half months. Um, however, we have set a global policy that we're not going to honor this. But let's say for this DC product combination, we do need to honor this. So we're going to go change this to yes. And you notice that as soon as we run out of inventory, Anna plan starts to show our shortfall. If we scroll a little bit farther down, we can actually see our shortfall start in week 36, and it accumulates until we, we are able to reorder inventory. And then you'll notice that we now have back on track. So let's just set this back to zero. And we'll go back to our global policy. The second thing that we can control, and a plan defaults to ordering one unit. The companies typically would not order just one unit. So we are allowed to, or, or we can set a, a order multiple. And if we look at our inventory, you'll see in this grid, we actually see our opening inventory, all our additions, all our outgoing, which comes from our consensus demand plan, and where our inventory ends up at the end of the day with our day's supply shown. But if you notice in our simulated receipts, our, our inventory is, is really kind of bouncing everywhere because we don't have any kind of order multiples in, in place. So let's say we are going to require an order to be at least a thousand units or in multiples of thousand. And we want to order, require an order of 10,000 at any given time. So you saw how it shifted our inventory and changed the way our, our inventory is now coming in. And if we look down here now, you'll notice that once the, the policy kicks into place, we are ordering 10,000 units at a time. Now, if we were to change our service level, so let's say we change this to 99% demand variability, in order to meet the service level requirement, we're going to have to keep more inventory on hand. So our inventory has now bounced up. And if you notice, our, our ordering hasn't really changed that much because we are able to maintain our inventory levels. So the other thing that we can do is by DC and by product is we can set minimum inventory levels and a target inventory level. So let's say we want a minimum inventory level of 25,000 and a target inventory level of 50,000. Now, if you notice, nothing changed. And that is because the minimum and target level inventory parameters don't work with our 99.5% service level demand variability. So what we would need to do in this situation is change this to a fixed quantity, fixed target, which is our Kanban. 
And now you see everything is updated. And if we scroll further down and look at our ordering, now you notice that our ordering is coming in in, in bigger chunks farther out. And what it is doing, it is maintaining our inventory levels, a minimum of 25,000, and trying to keep our target level at 50. So let's just go back to our default. And, and we have a couple of other things that we can control here. And one of those is our backorder strategy. So our default, default backorder strategy is to fill any backorders as we get inventory that comes in. And we also have the ability to fill and kill or fill or kill. And what fill or kill says is just, if we have the inventory, we're going to fill, fulfill the orders. If we don't, we're just going to forget them. Um, typically you would probably run your back order strategy. Also, Anna plan defaults to a, a global policy of nine days effective lead time. However, let's say that we are buying this product and our supplier comes in and says, hey, due to supply chain issues on our side, we are no longer going to be able to provide this product in nine days. It is now going to take us 90 days. And if we notice now, because our, our lead time is stretched out so far, we now have a shortfall based on our lead times. And that shows again down here, if you notice, we, we're now not able to meet our day supply. We're out of inventory. And then as soon as we can get the product from the supplier, we now are back on track and we are able to place our orders to get our inventory levels back where they need to be. And it also shows up in our shortfalls and variation, excuse me, shortfalls and valuations. So let's just set that back to our nine days. And this allows you to have very minute control over your, your DCs and your products, your supplier constraints, and any constraints that you might have in your production process. Um, because not all products might be made by you. Some might be bought, some might be made. So this gives you very granular control over how you plan your inventory at a DC and product level. Now, we can also look at a planner dashboard. And this just shows you some, some critical KPIs so that you can see exactly what is happening for your California DC for this product for a particular week. And we can also do comparisons. So what this is showing us is our comparison for scenario one, which is where we just made all of our changes versus our scenario two, which is a completely se separate scenario. And that way we can determine what is the best inventory plan for us to move forward. And if you notice, it shows you exactly what policy is being applied in each scenario. If you are uh, have any frozen horizons, your order multiples. So it's kind of a good quick glance at everything that is going on in each scenario. And we also have a grid uh, that shows you our reorders by time. So in this one, the one we were working on was product two, and you'll notice that we had our 10,000 in week. Uh, in week uh, 32, or sorry, week 31. And this will show you how all your future orders will be coming in. And then last but not least, we have a, a reorder page that shows exactly when our next order will be coming in. So for product two, our next reorder was week 31, FY23. We're actually making this product and our next uh, inventory shipment on this product alone will be 10,000 units. So if we go back to our inventory plan, we would see our weeks and then our, our inventory as it comes in. 
The other thing that Matt spoke about earlier is we have the ability to override our inventory policies by date. And we also have the ability to add any uh, expiries on a certain date, and they would then be included into our It'll take you just a minute to update. So now that we have a an expiry in product two, we would see it right here. And there is our expected expiry of a thousand units. And that is a very shallow high level dive into inventory planning. Uh, there are lots of things in here that can be adjusted. Definitely gives the ability to the planner to minutely control their inventory. 